What's up everybody? Been a while since we did a mail call. So here's a real special one for you guys. And this is a nice little selection from Mega Bass of Japan on the saltwater side of the game. And I'm getting ready here on a Friday morning for a weekend adventure locally here in Southern California. We're going to be fishing calico bass at San Clemente Island, maybe some bluefin tuna, yellowfin tuna various pelagic species, and then also getting ready for a return trip to Costa Rica, August 23rd through the 30th. So now that we have an idea of what to expect down there, I load it up, man. It's, uh, it's on and cracking now. I've seen the conditions, I've seen the type of fish, I've seen the tackle, I've seen what they do to tackle, and I've ordered these super sick saltwater offerings accordingly. So let's just go through it one by one. And man, let's start off with the bang right off the top. This bad boy right here. <whistles> uh, I want to say it's pronounced a Trigia pencil, 200. So that's 200 millimeters. It's 100 grams. This is a sizable lure here. And it's got a somewhat of a unique face shape here. I have no idea really what I can get this thing to do. But from the mega bass videos I've seen on YouTube where the guys are fishing this for GTs, it looks like it's gonna sploosh, it's gonna it's gonna pop, it's gonna throw some water, potentially get a little side to side walking action, but it's a big profile up on top. And I'm not 100% sure, but I wanna say this is a wood bait and a very limited edition bait. So it's something I've been eyeballing for quite some time now. As you can see here, this is a 2013 production. So this is a five-year-old bait. And I think that might have been the only run of them. So I'm super hyped that I've got my hands on them. And with big fish in mind, I love seeing small details like this rotating hook hanger. That's so key in converting those vicious bites into landed fish. And they come in the package here, unrigged. And I think that's smart. You know, for the most part, everybody likes rigging baits their own way, myself included. So this gives us the flexibility to outfit this bait however we see fit. We we'll put the split rings I'm confident in, which are probably gonna be like on our hyperwire number eights. Uh, probably 4X owner treble hooks, ST66s is what I'll go with. Since we have that swiveling hook hanger in the front, a single split ring should be sufficient. On the back, however, I might add a Spro power swivel for that same swiveling effect. Because after what I've seen in Costa Rica and the calico bass at home, of course, you, know, you get these wolf packs of so these big feeding predatory fish. And a lot of times when you hook one and you got this bait hanging out of its mouth, its buddy's coming up and taking shots at it. So your chances of doubling up on a single lure are honestly pretty good. And having rotating hook hangers is going to really up your odds of landing those. Because even on the freshwater side, you know, I've had it happen a few times, a couple times in the white road adventure with four plus pound smallmouth. And because those smaller bass baits don't have rotating hook hangers, usually one will twist the other off. So how epic would that be, huh? To number one, watch something eat one of these giant baits. And just to give you a size comparison, that's that Orpoi that I've been fishing. So it's, it's quite dramatically bigger. Big bait, big fish. Thick lines, heavy weights. Holds true in salt water too, especially down there. You know, I had a big Kubera snap, snapper destroy a mutton snapper that I hooked on that Orpoi. <laughs> There's no doubt in my mind that they'll hit something big. And this is going to be the biggest offering that I'm going to show them yet. So that's the Lumi color. Overall great, you know, high sun, throwing a lot of flash. That's a great color. So sick. And then something for a little bit low light conditions, early morning, late in the evening. We've got this thing. I don't even remember what color that is. I might have thrown the packaging away. I was so excited. Actually, this is the Riot's Purple. 
So that should cause quite the riot. I mean, just this bait alone has got me so pumped to return down there. And honestly, I think those big calicos will respond to it as well. Throw this thing in the kelp, see what happens. So we're gonna head over to Performance Tackle later and uh, pick up some hardware to outfit these bad boys and go test swim them locally before we take them down south. Stay tuned for these bad boys, man. So sick. That's a sick color. Some kind of a washi pattern, probably. Yep, ocean pink washi. So those fish definitely responded really well to the pink ore poise that we had down there, especially in that low light. So it's good to have some options. And, you know, depending on what I can get this thing to do in the water, there's definitely some crossover appeal. This could be a potential big striper bait. I could potentially fish muskies with it. And, you know, maybe even big largemouth. Really curious to see what I can get this thing to do. Now, I've seen some videos online, but like, look at the iSlide 262. If I try to fish that bait with the videos that I've seen on the internet, I would have probably not had close to the success rate that I had. Um, just figuring it out and spending time with the bait and experimenting. Experimenting with retrieves. You know, I learned that from uh, the late, great Ronnie Kobach in those Fishing in California books as a kid. That always stuck with me. Mix up your retrieves. Try something different five to ten casts at a time. Doesn't work, make an adjustment. If it works, stick with it. Build on that. That's applied throughout my fishing career. It's treated me well. You guys should uh, embrace that. So, Trigia Pencil. Super, super dope. Okay. And let's... Oh, sorry, my bad. And let's jump straight to the ore poise. This bait, I have completely fallen in love with. If you guys have watched the uh, Costa Rica series of videos, you'll see that we caught literally just about everything that swam down there on this particular lure. And it outfished the other baits that the guys are throwing probably anywhere from 5 to 10 to 1. It's a unique action, and it's something that the fish haven't seen down there before or here locally. You know, it's uh, it's almost like a combination top water, subsurface, walk the dog, um, real erratic stick bait. It's a genre of saltwater lures that I became aware of through Kevin Nakata, the old sea samurai. He was telling me about how he's catching these yellowtail out of the kayak on these various stick baits he was throwing. I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. So I started doing some research and came across stick baits like the Flapper and the Oropoi by Megabass Japan. And finally got my hands on some last uh, summer and really got a real chance to, to spend some time in fishing in Costa Rica last month. <laughs> and man, the, the teeth marks and the uh, battles and the big Kuberas and the big roosters taking a swipe at, the th at this thing. It's a fun, fun bait, and I think this style of bait is really going to start taking hold here at home in Southern California because our fish are so conditioned to seeing a surface iron. Even now, the popper has become really, really popular over the last few years. So just like any other fishery, you, you keep showing these fish the same thing, they're going to become conditioned to it. Not, as, not to the degree that a freshwater fishery like largemouth and smallmouth are because you know, the catch and release uh, aspect isn't as popular or as prominent, but it's still there. Definitely uh, proved itself to me in Costa Rica. Let's run through some color schemes here. So low light, a little bit of flash, a little bit of orange, GLX blue back. I think they might call that a red belly. Silver sides, blue top. That was a really good in-between color, going from overcast or low light to the sun and vice versa. Okay, once the sun came up a little bit, or sun comes up a little bit, I'm going to go to this straight live awashi. Pretty much the similar color pattern, but with sardine style dots and no loud flash on the belly. 
believe it or not, when it's high sun uh, and clear water, the, a lot of times you don't want them to really spy your bait from a long way. You gotta spark some interest and some curiosity. So throwing a translucent pattern like this GLX Stealth Awashi is going to be a game changer, I think, because I didn't really have anything like this on the first go around. And we had a lot of high sun, clear water conditions where visibility was super high. So check that out. You know, from that bottom perspective of a fish backlit against the sun, this bait's going to be a little bit harder for them to make out. And that surprisingly triggers quite a few bites. And we learned this, you know, freshwater fishing, bass fishing. Clear waters the west here. Doesn't rain very often. It's usually high sun. Translucent patterns do really well. So I'm really stoked to throw this thing around. Down there and here at home. The kelp out there at the islands gets pretty clear. And you guys have seen some of the calico bass videos where we shoot underwater. That's 30, 40 foot visibility easy. So that's when you want to start trying these uh, translucent patterns. Hey, look at this sick pattern. G pink head. A little bit of color. Kind of a more of a low key pattern overall though. Another in between uh, condition color here. A little bit of overcast, maybe some passing clouds, thunderstorms, etc. Low light. Just so you can make a little visual contact with that bait as it's coming in, darting on the surface. Big predators coming up behind it, taking swipes at it. And this is a GLX Seguro Awashi. Yep, probably butchering that one too. Sorry, Tets. But how sick is that? You know, that darker pattern tends to do well in low light for us. So that's a good one. Super pump. And you guys notice here on the sticker, it says a sinking model. Also comes in a floating model. So it depends what you want the bait to do. You know, if you're fishing it super fast with the high speed tranks like we were, you know, you could probably get away with the sinking model and keeping it up high in the column and the rod tip up to get that splashing and darting in and out of the water action. You know, or if you're, if you're trying to sink it out, you know, and get it down in the column, the sinking is, uh, you know, another option. And it's interesting because I brought floaters with me down there, but the Kuberas are punching holes in it with, the, with their teeth and it would take on water. But honestly, it seemed to fish even better at times in the wind, especially because it had extra weight of the water and it got down a little bit deeper and just continued to get licked. So watch out Costa Rica, we're coming back. And those local yellowfin and bluefin. Next up, I saw this bad boy online, absolutely fell in love. Look at that anchovy profile. That profile alone is going to get you bites. And this is the Mega Bass X Blades. 50 grams, gosh I want to say that's about four and a half inches maybe. Just a beautiful work of art. Nice and dense and heavy. You're going to be able to cast this thing a long ways, especially when those giant fish are keyed in on a smaller bait like an anchovy. This is going to get you out away from the boat and in the strike zone quite nicely. And you guys notice there, how sick is that? That's that mega bass detail. Oops, my bad, homie. Magnetic hook holder there. It's going to keep that, that hook from creating as much rash and pinned up against the body. You know, that could help, could, you know, create an extra bite or two when those fish are finicky. Nice stout hooks. You know, I might swap these hooks out for something a little bit bigger depending on the size of the fish that you're targeting. But I think for those Costa Rica fish, the stock hooks and those rings for sure are going to be just fine. Oh man, look at that. It's got a little bit of a translucency in the head. Just that beauty and craftsmanship and detail, man. Now we're bringing that to the saltwater game. Look what it did to freshwater. It's game over, guys. That's a sick color. What is that? M Live. Whatever that says. 
had a coochie. I love that coochie. And this bad boy right here is GG Washi, which is pretty much a sardine pattern. Just another beautiful bait. You know, and here on the West Coast, our live bait is predominantly either sardine or anchovy. And you can definitely find shades of purple in a lot of the anchovy. And sometimes a sardine. You know, it's sardine, sardines here, we get a little bit of green and blue and turquoise and all that other stuff mixed in with that yellow head. That's going to match the hatch quite nicely. So this is a beautiful casting option. You roll up on a boil, you roll up on, you know, fish out away from the boat. Throw this on a kelp. I dare you. <laughs> Dorado would go crazy on these things too. Just remember, keep that rod tip down. Don't let them jump. This thing coming flying back at you would be no bueno. So yeah, uh, if there's Dorado around, don't throw them because they'll definitely eat them and they'll probably throw them back at your face. So I warned you. Don't say I didn't. All right, moving down the hard bait lineup. This is a sick bait that I've been eyeballing for a while now. And I really don't know how you pronounce that. Kegaloo, perhaps, but it's a 124 size. And this, from what I've seen, seems to be a kind of a hybrid topwater walking popping bait. Big cup mouth there, and I want to say they designed this for their Japanese sea bass that they have out there. But obviously, see many, many species that are applicable to this particular bait. So, yeah, we'll just check that out this weekend, see what it does, see uh, what kind of action and uh, attention we can get called up from the depths. Very cool. Next on the list, got the old X140s. Beautiful hard bait for Mega Bass of Japan. This is another sick washi color. LZ Akahara washi. Another beautiful sardine pattern. Halibut guys are going to love this. Calico guys have done really well when they're on that smaller bait. Nice, long, thin, small profile. You need to play with these more for the spotted bay bass as well. Especially up and over those eelgrass beds that we've been smacking fish out of. You know, I don't know how many jerk baits they get they see on a consistent basis, but... Beautiful. You need to get me another legal halibut off the beach. It's been a long time since I've done that. That's part of why we ordered these. Yeah, this is a beautiful color. Rainbow CB. Now, even though they're kind of a finesse style jerk bait, they've got a nice weight to them. Transfer system. So they cast really nicely on standard bass traditional gear. That's a uh, Hamana, Hamana OP. It's a dope color. Pinkish hues. A little bit of violet. Pink and purple, man. Fish like that stuff. Especially low light. Then, you know, dirty water. GG bloop and gold. Kind of a fire tiger style. See the sticker there? They designed this for their Japanese flatfish. I'm not sure if that's a halibut or not, but they sure as heck look like our halibut. Up next, cut by. This is the Abalone Signal Red, and this is an interesting bait to me from the videos and demonstrations I've seen and literature that I've read on this particular bait. I believe this bait was designed to swim in a more horizontal fashion, coming through the column kind of like that, versus a head down position as with most traditional lipless crankbaits. But, you know, this is a 17 gram, little bit, heavier probably a little bit denser to you know cope with the density of the salt water with saltwater hardware i think the halibut are going to love this and 
just like we ripped through hydrilla for largemouth and even smallmouth in some parts of the country with a lipless bait, I really think I can duplicate that fishing the eelgrass and ripping it out of the eelgrass beds for spots and halibut and everything else that swims in the bays and local waters here in Southern California. But also down in Costa Rica, I think this is going to be a really good tool for targeting my first snook in the surf, in and around that surf zone. Apparently they like feeding on smaller bait fish a lot of times, so that little 70 size I think is going to do really well. Nice little color run down here, chartreuse pattern, chartreuse back rainbow, dirty water, low light, that's gold. We got a lot of mullet and just silver looking fish all over the world. So this GG Bora is going to be solid. I mean, that's just a fancy black chrome almost. We all know that gets bit. Another sick low light dirty water condition bait is the GG Akakin. I need to just get Tetsuya down here so you can uh, read off all the names. But that's a sick hard bait that I'm excited to explore both locally and abroad. And ooh. More sick hard baits. All you SoCal guys know the power of the brown bait. And a brown bait is a generic term for a lot of the different rough fish that a lot of times get netted with the anchovies and sardines at the bait tank. And they're really like perch shaped for the most part. Um, you know, herring, um, Etc. Etc. We just call them brown baits. It's been a while, but this is the saltwater battalion. Look at that. How sick is that? So that taller perch shape, you know, black. It, it could be a blacksmith perch, Garibaldi, um, Opali. A lot of those fish inshore are kind of shaped more like a sunfish. And even down in Costa Rica, we were using those look downs and those moonfish that have that bigger, taller profile. So I'm excited to see what this thing does on the calicos and inshore in Costa Rica. That thing is sick, right? Seen pictures of this on the Megabass Inc., which is Megabass of Japan Instagram. And look at this color. This thing's sick. Look at that paint job. Goes from like a turquoise and blue to a green to a yellowish gold. A lot going on there. Heavy duty hooks. Should have no problem. Let's go battle test these this weekend. Looking forward to getting these wet. Word on the street is I might be fishing with the old little seas and the homie Matt Peters for the first time. Southern trout eaters. Stay tuned. Up next, check this bad boy out. This is the bottom slash. And it is a vibrating jig head with a pretty unique system here. So it comes with the jig head with this hook harness rigged to the belly ring or the nose ring or chin ring, whatever you want to call it. Screw head design. Comes in a gold head and a silver head, 20 gram and 30 gram option. And just like you do with a lot of the soft plastics, you just want to line this up, see where it would sit on the head, insert that shaft, rotate it into place, just like so. And then you can either rig this on the bottom or on the top, which I think I'm gonna I'm gonna do because I want to fish this over the eelgrass. And you can pin that little stinger hook right there in between those two flappers. And I got a chance to try and catch some halibut with this last night for about 30 minutes. But I was I was that curious to see what this thing does in the water. And that blade right there puts off a pretty unique vibration. It's almost like a high pitch. 
and it's something I've never felt in a vibrating jig before. Couple that with the, you know, body wobble and the extra swimming action from those appendages. All the big bait guys know what's up with that, the stalker trout, you know, and the paddle tail. This bait had like this really unique, like squirming swimming action. Expecting big things from this. And mostly because it's new and the fish haven't seen it. That goes a long way, people. Stay tuned. I think we're gonna catch some halibut, some spotted bay bass, and uh, see what else wants to eat this in Costa Rica. A couple of the color options here. That's a hazy, kind of a brown bait. Shirasu, pearl, maybe a little bit of glow to it. There's that chartreuse option. Got a blue pattern here that they call Fawashi. So that's supposed to be, you know, sardine, anchovy. Pretty cool, pretty uh, unique. And what we have here is a backslider. This is a vertical option, as you can see from the diagram here. So you, those of you guys that like fishing vertical jigs should get pretty excited. These are some pretty interesting color schemes. You know, I think with that deep water fishing in mind, I think these guys are definitely paying attention to the science of it all. You guys might look at these colors and be like, dude, that looks crazy. But you might forget that colors are filtered out through the water column and the spectrum. So what this looks like here above the surface is going to be completely different than what it's representing down in 10 fathoms, 20 fathoms, 30 fathoms. And a fathom is six feet, by the way. So, you know, nice flat side on one side. Angled edges on the other. And that's the straight pink color right there. Finally, an easy one. Thanks, Mega Bass. And that's a hundred. That's the 120 gram version. But they also have a 180. And here's a size comparison for you guys there. Now, on at least two of these patterns here, they got some glow. So you can charge this up with the UV light. Just grab a flashlight. If you guys are fishing in the dark, in the gray, charge that bad boy up. It's going to glow quite nicely. And mimic a lot of that sea life down deep below that's got that bioluminescence. And just make it easier for them to uh, find it. So excited to drop these on tuna locally and potentially amberjacks and groupers and all kinds of stuff in Costa Rica. We got a solid vertical jigging option here. Very cool. That color was the silver, silver zebra. We've got an Akakin zebra. It looks like a glow pink. Dang, missed it. Pink zebra. So it's that pink with that glow. Super sick. And to wrap this up, this is a bait that I've been eyeballing online for quite some time now. And this is the Metal X Cut Upper. And I have was able to get my hands on three different sizes. This is the 120 gram. We have 150 gram, which is obviously a little bit heavier. About the same size and profile though. And then we got a little bit larger and of obviously heavier, 180 gram. Not really sure what this thing is gonna do in the water, just from looking at it. I think it's gonna get bit both casting and vertically on the sink. You know, that, that drop style jig has become very popular the last few years. So I'm curious to see how this thing swims on the way down. 
and on the retrieve. And they don't come rigged, so that gives me an opportunity to play with some rigging options. We'll do some dancing stingers from owner off the nose and potentially off the back as well, as well as a straight treble off the back to see what it does on a casting retrieve. And it looks like all these patterns here have two sides to them. That's got calicles written all over it, if you ask me. Cake and silver. Here we go with another glow stripe pattern. That should be good in both high light and low light conditions because of the silver and the glow elements. This is a sick pattern here. Blue and chrome. There it is again, guys. G blue. Gotta keep it G. Three different size options. Several different sick colors. This is the G pink. Let's take one of those out. I think we're gonna be fishing that as well on Sunday. I don't know what the other side looks like. Well, the good news is this packing is secure. Good grief, come on. Wow. Yep, G pink to silver. It's got that abalone style finish that Mega Bass loves to use. Beautiful color scheme found in nature. That's dope. And then we got Little Nemo. Glow Stripe Nemo. Hey! Glow Stripe Nemo. Go figure. That's going to be good uh, low light. Let's see what this thing looks like. And then Nemo's got that sick looking brown, gold, bronze side too. I think that about wraps it up. I've got a pair of uh, titanium gloves here in the case that I gotta handle some another bull shark or something with teeth down there or sharp gill rakers. Just gonna throw these in the bag just in case. And then when I come home, we start if I'm long enough to do some lobster hooping or something you can always use some gloves so those are sick from mega bass large size and that's probably Japanese large and the last item of the day just an extra pair of mega bass PE line scissors you can never have uh, too many pairs of scissors laying around down there on the last trip I was a little under underprepared as far as tools go so I'm bringing split ring pliers, I'm bringing some scissors, and probably a, a crimping tool of some kind. Rig some leaders. But, as always, thank you guys for tuning in. Subscribing to the channel, liking, leaving the comments. Let us know what you guys want to see a tackle breakdown for. And we'll see if we can find and make the time to, to make it happen. But stay tuned. Go watch the Costa Rica series here on the, on the channel. Go watch the Saltwater series here on the channel and continue to watch us across all social media platforms as we start putting these baits to work. It's going to be fun. Also, check the links below in the description. You'll be able to find a lot of these items through our affiliate at the Hookup Tackle. Give Ben Collar a, a shout over there at the shop. He might not get them up on the site quite yet, but maybe we can convince him to do another live unboxing like we did a few months ago with some of the Mega Bass of Japan items so you guys can get first dibs because there's not a single dealer in the U.S. that I'm aware of that carries any of this. So stay tuned. And once again, thank you guys for the support. Catch you guys on the flip side. Peace!